Hello and welcome to this, the third video in this Atlassian JIRA administration video tutorial series. In the first video we looked at what is JIRA, why use JIRA, and how to get your free 30-day JIRA on-demand trial from the Atlassian website. In the second video we covered how to set up your JIRA environment, so what are the basic top-level system settings available to JIRA administrators, what do they do, and when should you use them. And in the third video, which is this video, we'll be looking at how to set up a basic project using all of the system defaults. Okay? Then in later videos, we'll look at fields and screens, users groups, notifications, permissions, and workflows, which should all allow you to bespoke your project far further. Okay? So let's carry on. Uh, so in this video, we'll create the basic project. We'll, I'll then create a ticket and simultaneously I'll show you where in the administrative back end the screen is defined and all the fields uh, that the user has to complete are shown as well Okay, just to get you started um, like I say in later videos we'll cover it in much greater detail Okay, thereafter we will look at um, as a user how can you progress a ticket so from open to in progress to resolved to closed to reopened potentially um, so we'll do that in conjunction with the default workflow that's shipped with JIRA so you can really get an idea of what's, uh, what, what Atlassian provide and so on. Okay, but then later we can uh, bespoke that even further. Right, so what is a project? So before we get started on creating a project we should probably understand what it actually is. Well, essentially it's a container for tickets to belong to, okay? So it's very uh, very simple, you might have a support project, you might have a bug project. Um, it's essentially a label that's that, uh, almost like a filter if you like, that, that all issues are grouped together under. Okay. Next up um, there is uh, issue type. So this is at the second tier. So when you create a ticket, first of all you have to define the project and thereafter you have to select as a mandatory field an issue type and this is uh, used for two reasons one to determine what screen you're shown so a different issue type can have a different screen and two uh, it can be used to search and filter tickets okay uh, so if you're trying to track something down or locate something in the system okay. so uh, what we're going to do now is have a look at the browser Okay, so for users from the previous uh, video, you'll notice that I've added a bespoke system logo and also a bespoke fab icon uh, just to make the system a little bit more engaging uh, and uh, interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a project now. So what you need to do is click on projects, okay, then click on create project. Okay, this little light box appears. This is uh, essentially the same light box you'll have seen the first time you log on to your on-demand accounts. Okay, if you've got a uh, downloaded copy, it might be a slightly different interface. But uh, and also if there's been a new release, um, but just bear with me and, and adapt as best you can. Okay, so uh, these ones, Agile at the bottom, these are related specifically to the Greenhopper plugin. So for the time being, we're going to ignore these and we're going to focus on a blank project and configuring everything ourselves okay so we'll click on next so the name uh, the name is very simple um, what do you want to call it uh, what you should bear in mind is if you have a system with a lot of projects in it uh, you need to make sure the names are clear and distinct so there's no confusion okay uh, perhaps speak to a project manager if you're unsure but yeah generally it's quite straightforward okay then we have key. So the project key is actually a really important and uh, often overlooked uh, element. So why is it important? I hear you ask. Well, first up, you'll see that for a project I created earlier, Freaky Fun, you'll see that it's actually shown on the dashboard. If you, if you opt for that field to be to be shown in that gadget filter, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so it can be present there it's also important in the URL so you'll see that you have your website forward slash browse and then you have the project key dash the project to uh, the ticket number okay 
So this is really useful if you need to quickly um, go to a go to a, a specific ticket. So it'll be what number. So yeah, if you're if you're communicating with um, your colleagues or your friends or, or whatever, and you're working on a shared project, it'll be what number ticket does it relate to? Okay, and you type it in here, uh, one two three or whatever. Okay. Thirdly, thirdly, you can also use this quick search box. So if you type in here, this is uh, the key. This is the number of the the ticket number. Click on search. Okay, and it takes you straight to it. Yep simple yeah excellent right so in this case we'll call it fun bugs the key will be FB the project lead will be you okay uh, this isn't that important I believe uh, depending on the settings you have it can be that whenever a ticket is created it goes directly to the project lead but um, more often than not it's not that important it can also be useful for um, if people need to know who to contact and they're looking through the system. I think it's uh, visible somewhere, but it's not it's not that important a field um, unless you've opted for users to um, uh, for, for for tickets that are created to be assigned directly to the project lead. Okay, so we we'll submit that, and now we have the brand new shiny project. Excellent. So what you need to do at this stage, or what what we're going to do is is start by bespoking some of the top level project settings. So click on administration. Okay, then click on edit project. Okay, so URL. Well URL is a very simple uh, field. It's it's simply a text field that uh, is then uh, shown to users when you're when you're looking at the detail of the project. Okay. I'll show you that in a moment, so don't worry if you're if you're not following fully. Um, then project avatar. So this is really simple. You'll see it in the, mo at the moment. There's an avatar here. I'm going to use this one, the fun bugs avatar, as I like to call it. Okay, and then description. This is the fun bugs project for, let's say, testers. Okay. Click on update. Right. So watch. The URL has changed. The logo has changed and also the description has changed. So if we're in non-administrative view, okay, you'll be able to see these sorts of details. Okay. Right, excellent. So now that that's done, what we're gonna do is get prepared to create our first ticket. Okay, so what do I need open? Let's see. So I need see right, we'll, we'll talk you through it. So we've got issue type. Uh, we also want to have the screens and uh, workflows as well. Okay, so this is within the project administration page. We've got the issue types that are going to be available to our users. We have the screen. You'll see that they're all using the default screen for all the different issue types. Okay, and we also have workflows, and you'll see that currently the default workflow is being used. Okay. So, how does this relate to creating an issue? Right, well, if I click on this one, so go back to the home page and then click on create issue. Okay, right, so what can we see? So, the project name, fun bugs, issue type, bug. So, you can see these are the issue types that are available. And if you recall, you'll see that bug is the default one. Yep. And you'll see also that for these issue types, for these operations, this screen is used, the default screen, okay? So the default screen you will see has all of these fields, okay? Right now, if we go back to our issue, you'll see that some of the fields are in fact missing. Okay, why is that? Well, some of them are related specifically to, uh, I think, Greenhopper plugin, so epic name and that sort of thing. But to prove to prove the point, okay, what I'm going to do is, if you recall where description is, it's below. Uh, it's currently below components, fixed versions, and effects versions. What we're going to do is we're going to drag it so that it is above. Okay. And then what we're going to do is change the issue type. Okay. And now you will see it has changed position. Okay. Simple, yeah. So that's where the data uh, comes from. Okay. Right, so let's now go through and populate these fields. As you'll know, as a, as a user, you can just select uh, 
the ones that are particularly relevant. So we'll just take the ones we need to fill in. Okay. So we'll call this uh, test. We'll call this one test. Actually, I do just want to show you time tracking there because okay, due date. We'll make that the 30th of June. Okay. Uh, okay, original estimate. So we're going to say that this issue is going to take one week to complete. We don't need any attachments at the moment. Uh, labels we're not particularly bothered with at the moment. And epics, uh, that's I believe related to Greenhopper and is not currently relevant. Okay, so create. Right, so you'll see issue, uh, project key, issue number, issue number, and description there. Okay, so we create it. Okay, here's all the details that we have. Right, so we've done the screen. We'll come back to that in a later video. So we can close that down, we can close that down, and we can close the issue types bit down as well at this stage. Okay? Uh, yeah, right. So now we're into the workflow. So we'll use the diagram mode because it's simple. And actually, I want to go into full screen to make this a little bit easier to show. Right, so what we have is um, uh, an issue is created, it goes to a state of open. Then there is a transition that allows it to go to in progress. From in progress, the options are back to open or closed or resolved. Okay. From resolved, it can go to reopened or it can go to closed. Okay. And from closed, it can go to reopened and so on and so forth. So it's a, a loop system. Okay. So let's have a look at our um, uh, let's have a look at our ticket then and see what options are available. So here you'll see the options that I've got are start progress. Bear in mind here I'm the assignee and reporter. That means as a reporter I would have certain permissions such as the ability to close a ticket. As the assignee I'd have the ability to work on issues. Okay. You'll see that at the moment uh, because of the way the project is set up whenever an issue is created it automatically gets assigned to the project lead. Remember I, I mentioned that earlier? So it's automatically been assigned to me. Okay, great. So if I click on, well, let's see how these buttons relate. So start progress is a transition from open to in progress. Okay, resolve issue, right? So resolve issue uh, is the transition from open to resolved. Okay. The other options we have are close issue. So here you'll see open to closed. Yep. So we're going to go uh, start progress. Okay. So Oh look, I'm now at the in progress step. Okay, so in progress, uh, and that indicates I am working on this ticket. Okay, so it can go back to open, and it can go to resolved, and it can go to closed as well. Okay, so I can go. Oh, I'm no longer uh, available to work on this. I can go. Oh, I'm going. Uh, this is done. I'm going to resolve this, or I can go as the reporter. I can say actually I made a mistake in creating this, it's no longer relevant or whatever and close it, okay? So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to resolve the ticket. Okay. We've done our work on it, it's now been resolved, okay? So the resolution, uh, this, this is a screen that is set up to appear when somebody clicks on the resolve issue button, okay? So the resolution, it's been fixed, okay? Uh, the assignee will remain uh, with uh, me as I am the person who uh, reported the issue originally. Time spent, okay. So this is related to time tracking, so I'm going to put that as one week. Okay, it should then adjust automatically. I'm going to call this complete and then I'm going to click on resolve. Okay. So, if you look at the time tracking, I don't know if you were seeing how it was updating, but it went from estimated, uh, remaining was uh, an orange bar that said one week, and logged one week. Okay. It's now complete, the resolution is showing as, re as fixed, the status is resolved. Okay. Excellent. So, you can see how that's how we've gone through to the resolved status. Now, what we're going to do is close it. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, and we'll close that, and it is now closed. And we can, as you'll see, there's a reopen button as well. So that's a very quick introduction to creating a project, loosely configuring it, and working through uh, 
creating an issue uh, where the screen uh, exists and the fields in that screen and also um, the workflow as well. In the next video we're going to go into a little bit more detail and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.